Well, good evening, folks. It's time for part two of this series to rebuild this differential. So this is a 2008 Dodge Ram 1500. It's a limited slip differential. It's supposed to be what they call the corporate model that's in this truck. So let's break this thing open, see what's in here, see if we can find out what's wrong and fix it. You might remember I did a video a while back when I changed the fluid and I took off this cover. I used the uh, high temperature RTV, which seems to have worked out well. Wow, if you had smell -o vision this is nasty smelling stuff. Heavy gear oil. Let me bring you in a little closer here and uh, we'll take a look at what I see so far. But now we can look that thing right straight in the eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the drive shaft turns the pinion and the pinion turns the ring. So I'm turning the pinion with my hands here. It turns fairly easy, but uh, sort of getting a look at what happens during normal operation. Mm -hmm. We're going to drain this smelly stuff. And since you don't have smell -o vision we will uh, exclude you from that process. But basically, we're gonna take out that screw right here pretty soon, knock out that pin, and some clips in here to get to the rest of this smelly apparatus. But first, let's uh, tip this thing and drain the fluid. So now that I have the brake calipers and the brakes off, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some purple power back in this uh, transaxle cavity and try to clean up some of this oil and some of the smell. I think it'll work out fine. This is a pretty strong degreaser. I'm putting it on uh, as is, uh, concentrated. And I could use uh, brake fluid, but that's very expensive and uh, don't really need to do that. I may use brake cleaner on some of the parts by themselves, but we'll try this first and see if we can get this sloshed around and cleaned up a bit while it's inside of this cavity instead of putting it on the bench and trying to clean things up. So take a look. Hey Rocky, what's up big boy? <laughs> what you doing big boy? Huh? Is you working on one of your bones? I guess so. You're really working that thing over, aren't you? Huh? Yeah, you're working that thing over. I tell you, yeah. Now let's check to see how much backlash we have between the pinion and the ring gear. We've got about nine thousandths there. Actually, it's more like ten thousandths. 
So that's pretty close to being in spec. So these gears are, they're not sharp. They're not uh, worn to shreds, but they actually make a sort of a, a yellow paint or chalk paint to check the mesh of these gears. I don't have any. I'm sure I'll get some with the uh, kit. So for now, just some visual observations and the first measurement. This pin is a bolt, actually it's a pin, a threaded pin. It goes through this pin, which actually serve to hold these spider gears inside. If not, they would fall out. So, and I don't remember if this is left hand or right hand thread, fellas, but um, it seems like it's starting to come loose, so it must be a, a normal thread. Yep, okay. A lot of times, and we aren't out yet, but a lot of times I've heard and seen people that have trouble getting this out of here. Sometimes this pin gets damaged. If you drop it into drive or cram it into reverse without using your brake, this pin can get damaged and it can get burred it'll bind up and then twist off. So, we don't want that to happen. We want it to come out of there just like it's supposed to. I'm using a 5 16 wrench. I think this is probably more like an eight millimeter. But we seem to be working. Oh yeah, sweet. That bad boy came out of there just like it should. It has a little wear, but it's not, doesn't appear to be damaged much. I don't have a brass drift, which is what I really need. Ah, sweet. That's gonna start moving, no problem. The challenge is, will it, will it keep moving? Have to move it from not hitting the bottom there. Yep. Still moving, that's good. Hmm. I've seen some on videos just fall out. Not the case on this one. Let's put that pin back in there and see if we can get it to move. Got a couple little weird dings on him right there. There's supposed to be some C clips in here that hold the axles in. So let's turn that thing over like this. Now here's where sometimes these C-clips, people get them to fall out by themselves, but basically we reach over here and we push this axle in towards the center like that. And there's a C-clip and there it went. You saw it before I did. I'm gonna turn you folks around here so you can see this operation. I hear Rocky upstairs again, <laughs> playing with his bone. Silly boy. All right. Okay, fellas, let's bring this axle out of here. What do you say? Whoop! Here we come. Try not to. Do too much damage to our seals all over, not gonna keep them. 
That's nasty. That's nasty. Okay. We'll just set that down and sort of out of the way. Well, that was easy. Let's see if we can have the same kind of luck over here. First, we gotta drop our C-clip out of there. Let's get you back in here where you can watch what's going on. Now you tell me when that clip falls out, okay? Got it? There it went, I heard it. Did you see it? I think you must have seen it, okay. So same thing. I'm not gonna move the camera, but I am gonna pull this thing out of there real quick. Well, that one's gonna come out. That one's gonna come out super easy. If you're not careful, that little notch the C clip fits into will grab on you on the way out. Okay. Let me move you over here and let you see inside the um, seal. Seal actually doesn't look bad. But that will be replaced. Same thing on the other side. A little bit of oily looking stuff, like it may have been leaking a little. Let's get you back over here, set you up. And the next task, I think, is removing these bolts. I think this bolt has to do with the disc packs and the clutch and their adjustment, not positive with that yet. These two bolts have got to come out. We need to mark these caps, either one side or the other, so I don't get them mixed up in case those caps go back in. So hold on to your hats. And I think I'm gonna put a mark out here. Yep. I'm gonna put a mark somewhere on here. And that way I know that cap goes on this side. Like I say, I'm glad you guys don't have smell vision because this gear fluid is rank. As in smelly. Boy, you can hear Rocky going to town upstairs, can't you? Got that bone taken care of, Rocky? Huh? Hey, Rocky. Rocky boy. Hey, buddy. What you doing up there, huh? <laughs> what you doing, big boy? Huh? I could argue that one's a little loose. I mean, it was tight, but it certainly wasn't torqued as much as the other one. Now let's take those out. If we're strong enough, just pick that out of there. So one thing I wanna do also is make sure that these shims and these shims, I wanna know what they are. So if I go back in there with that, I'll use the same shims, hopefully. some threads right there that you can barely see. I don't know if I have a tool. There we go. 
might have gotten the right combination. Okay, fellers, there we go. Rocky, were you watching to see where the shims went, buddy? Huh? <laughs> there should be some shims. I'm told there was going to be shims, but it turns out there are no shims. Okay. These little C clips I was telling you about earlier. Good thing you don't have smell of it. Next, we're going to take out that bad boy, I think. And herein lies the problem. Let me get that a little more cleaned off for you. Check this out right here. See that roller right there? That is chewed all to pieces. I don't know if it was something went through that or if that bearing just wore out. But every time that thing turned at least once, it sounded like every time the tire rotated, that thing squawked. But it turns out one, well, two rollers two rollers. That was the main vibration I was hearing, I believe. Scraping gnarly sound. The um, pieces off of this are probably somewhere and they may be in the wheel bearing. So another reason that this entire assembly has to come completely down, get completely, completely cleaned of debris and metal shavings. Well, so folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming along with me. Made significant progress today. Stay tuned for phase three. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, or dissent. You've been watching the Junkyard Tailgate channel. Good day.